Here's the front view of the High Hog self catch headgate. It's a headgate that I trust entirely. The only time you'll ever see me on the handle of this chute is to catch pets where you have to give them full opening and then catch them manually, or to catch a full set of horns, or to release the animal. Handles. Now you don't see so much anymore, but there's some old self catch headgate handles that you had two handles. So there was a chance of grabbing the wrong one. And some of them only had one handle, but you moved it a little bit one way to open the back latch, and a little bit farther the same way, and then the back latch lifted the front latch to release your animal. So if an animal came in good and hard, which is usually what you prefer, the momentum of the back latch lifted the front latch, and that animal didn't even slow down. The way this is set up, whichever way your handle goes, you push it ahead, to open ahead. First of all, you can't grab the wrong handle because there's only one here. Push it back and the head gate goes back. So it's a very simple, short learning curve to run this head gate. We have a very simple method for setting for self catch. You open your head gate full out, just nicely take the slack out of this chain and latch it, and that's pretty much the right position for the self-catch. Well, for any fine-tuning, you got one link at a time to fine-tune your self-catch. Now they cannot open that up. If they pull backwards, they come part way through and the dog barks and they come back up. They cannot pull that head gate open any farther than where you set it. This handle, we've got your hand well out of danger. Made it a very fast handle. If you're catching a full set of horns, you can go from full width in to shut in only 60 degrees. This head gate is actually simpler, I think, for catching horns. People used to say you had to have a scissor head gate to catch a set of horns. With that scissor head gate, you had that much neck, and you had to have, your timing had to be perfect to get behind the horns in front of the shoulder on the, as the animal was coming through at 22 miles an hour. This one. If they're coming in, all i got to do is get behind the horns. If the animal's still coming, the shoulders will finish the catch for me. So I think it takes less skill to catch a horned animal with this head gate than it did with the, with the scissor type. But if you're not catching horns, let the cow do the work. Just hook that up, leave it hooked up, and the cattle can catch themselves. Here's a chain we use for head restraint. If you're tattooing, implanting, ear tagging, maybe working on an eye, something where you need control of the head. Once the animal's head gated, they generally always are tossing their head up and down. So when they drop it, you run this over top of their neck. When they drop their head, in. Now the way these latches are designed, they're straight up and down, so I do not have to get more chain to release an animal. I can have the biggest bull on the farm pulling on that as hard as he can, and I don't have to get more chain. All I gotta do is give it a flip and he's released. You can also use this as a cheater. If you're catching a set of horns, we've got some rodeo contractors that are raising bucking bulls and they got big animals with big horns. They need to open it up to get them in. They can put this across there. Just in case they figure that the guy that's operating the chute isn't as quick as the bull is. Brisket will start it, shoulders will finish it. So it's almost a self-catch even with horns. Now if you're going to use that cheater as a cheater to catch, say, longhorn calves, something that's smaller, 600 pounds or so, you put that across there. And you might catch some of them, but the odd one's going to probably going to try to jump it. And if they do jump it, it's not a big deal. Their back legs are going to pull this chain. They're going to be caught by the hips, but you can probably still tag them. And you can get out of trouble just by delatching it and getting it back out. 
They all look fairly similar, but it's little things that make a big difference. We bottleneck our stanchions so they can't throw their head up and delatch it. We have horn loops here so that if you have a horned animal in there, the horns will hit the loops instead of the latch. We have our top bolts have a spring on the back side for cushioning the, the shock when the animal hits the head gate to catch itself. That view shows how the good aggressive cleats that we use on the floor. If you're catching animals by the head, a lot of their first natural instinct is to pull back. A lot of times their back legs will slip and they wind up down on their butt. But by having good aggressive cleats like that, it eliminates some of that problem. You can also have a good look at the sternum bar. The mounts here are bolted in. You can either bolt them or weld them. We made ours so that you can leave your mounts in, pull two pins and take the hoop out. For certain situations you might not want the, the sternum bar in there. Some of the little things that we put a little extra quality into our shoe, look as the rope we use is very high quality rope. It will shrink, but it uh, is very, very well or long wearing, doesn't fray and is very strong. All four corners are adjustable. Our pins here have this L shape on them so that you can't lose them. Spring load at the top so you can actually set these stanchion widths with an animal in the chute. Did that get it?